Okay, hello everybody. This will be the second video, Save the Eagle. You can see here, all that glue and sawdust is super hard. I was drinking my morning coffee with just carved, talking, I was drinking my morning coffee, chatting with just carved Rob this morning. And I was talking to him about this. Let's see if we can give you a bigger scale. Talking to him about this eagle and he said, well, Basically, in polite words, you've always struggled with your eagle heads being too big for your body, so this eagle head's still way too big for the body. And I just, I'm just not happy with it. That's the bottom line. And like, like I said from the very beginning, if this doesn't turn out, I'm not, yeah, I am going to be a little bit, damn those Mustangs, I'm going to be a little bit disappointed, but not too bad. It's not really that big of a deal. It's just a piece of wood, you know, you can always get another piece and try it again. So, looking at this, well, I said to Rob, well, if I go from this point here, and it should, I want it facing down, not up. Rob thinks it looks, it's looking for, at the, looking for UFO. So, if I do this, then we got our beak there, kind of deal. Actually, that, yeah. Because the thing is, the head's going to be too far back. But then I realized, I'm like, hold on a second. Those screws don't go that far into the wood. I can still take all that wood off there. The struggle's real, friends. And, you know, I'm, I'm just going to sit here. I'm going to carve and I'm going to enjoy the moment. You know, like, so I'm good. Like, I'm lucky to be here carving. What else can I say? Now you see it. Now you don't. So I'm going to have to cut. I hope those dowels don't go. Those leg bolts, like whatever bolts I got, don't come out too far. Because I got to cut this back. <sighs> the worst case scenario, I might have to cut this. Because this is kind of a mess back here anyways. I might have to cut this slow down Jordy the eagle heads are so small compared to the bodies and that's what this video is about is you've always struggled with that so now's the time and I hope this can motivate all you too so I got this uh, chainsaw carving eagle bench book this is the chainsaw carving an eagle. Got two different eagles here, but then you got this book too. Ryan uh, Cook talked me into buying this. Denny Rogers, the, the illustrated bull, the eagle. So you got there and you got, see look at the wing patterns you get. I'll be using that. I was hoping I could come here and start carving the wings right away. So, you know, when eagles are sitting, they're usually leaned forward. Well, this one's not gonna be leaning forward. So there's so much information in this book. Where's the big uh, wingspan? There's talons, how to do talons. There's a picture of a, like, see how forward that eagle? These are just drawings too, though. There's some bone structure in there. Like, look, that's a good picture. Look how small the head is compared to the body. This car, Rob says I should make it so like he's flying and he's got his legs coming out here and then his talons are out and stuff like that, but um, no, I'm not doing that. Hey, one thing right now, I'm a lot happier with the size of that head. A lot happier. Now, for the size of the body. Looks like a phoenix right now, doesn't it? I got to 
get my saw. Here's the center of the tree, by the way. I gotta get my saw. Go like this. See the lines on there? Cut it to here, then I'll go like this so he has legs there. And then his talons will be on here. So, looks like I can cut. I can carve a dragon, I can make this a dragon. Okay. So, now I gotta do this cut. Remember I got the leg bolts in the back here. I don't know how far they come out. So just, I, I'm gonna uh, be using this old beauty of a 034 saw with that, I think it's 24 inch cannabar on there. And let's, I'll film, I'll put the camera on the tripod and I'm gonna cut here and you guys will see if I hit the leg screws or not. So cut down here, stop actually here, stop here, and then uh, carry on. Sorry for the language, but um, there you go. That's what that hole in the front, I don't know why that hole was in the front though, but that was the hole that I was talking about in the first video. There's a hole there, I put wood glue and um, sawdust in there. <sighs> Fuck man. I don't know. I just don't know. If I got a socket here, if I can back that off, then maybe get some wood dowels and then dowel these these wings in. God damn fuck! So I'm getting one out here, but this isn't the one that I hit. This is the one that I hit, and I can't get that out. It's friggin' so. I don't, I'll get it out of there. Piece of shit. Well, I'm not going to be able to monetize this video, that's for sure. I think what I'm going to do is just back them all off so I can carve it, leave them backed off. And I gotta get some wood dowels. Some of these are just different sizes too. I just don't want to take these wings off. Because if I take them right off, they're never going back on. Now you son of a fucking thing stripped or something. Here. Okay, so I got all these out. Now, they're still in there. I don't know if I'm gonna replace all these with dowels, with wood dowels. I'll, I'll drill some bigger holes and get some bigger dowels. I'm not too sure yet, so we'll see we'll, if my saw even cut. I'm not even gonna resharpen my chain, but um, We'll see how many, so there's a hole. We'll see how many holes are in here. How many uh, would I have hit? So like I said, here we go, right here. Boom, boom. Chris Burnett, you're just messaging me. I'm glad you're out of the hospital. And uh, just like I said from the beginning, bro, rest, rest, skipper. Oh.
break time. So after my break, I'm gonna shape the wings. If you kind of look at this, right at the top of my fingernail, those kind of look like they're talons and it's sitting on something. Maybe I could make it so it's like a skull head or a skull, it's sitting on a skull or something. I don't know. Open the imagination. I think I'm gonna carve a skull head there. I think I'm gonna do it. <laughs> You guys are probably getting sick of me uh, showing all these blackberries. Sorry, can't help it. Oh, look at all those there. Oh, yeah. Don't shit your pants. So today's been uh, kind of a relaxing day, just kind of taking my time. It's a great magazine to have, or book. This eagle head I can cut off. You can, it can be a wall hanger. I'm gonna save this, um, take it home, finish carving it, and then, you know, it just hangs on the wall like this, like an eagle head. So I got my saws cleaned up. I was kind of thinking when I was doing working on this piece about I always try and think of something motivational to say. And I was thinking, hold on. I was thinking like, what would this carver do? What would that carver do for this? What would this carver do? What would that carver do with this? Well, the bottom line is. Do what you want to do. You know? Just do what you want to do. So I did what I wanted to do. I carved a skull head down there. It's not a crazy detailed skull head. It's just a freaking skull head. It's starting to look a lot better. This head... It's a little bit too skinny this way up here, like this way. So I'm thinking to myself, well, how am I going to fix that? See how it's just kind of too much in that way? How am I going to fix that? Well, I think tomorrow, I'm going to be done for the day if I didn't say that. Tomorrow, I'm just going to go, brap, cut that right off here. Then bring my eyes down here, bring it all lower, because realistically, your eyes are lower than the beak. I don't have, I'm not going to pull that book out. This stuff, I just kind of did what I wanted to do. So tomorrow I'll come back and I'll do these things and I'll cut the little feathers in here. Cut big wing, big feathers in here. It's good to kind of, when you're working on a piece like this, it's good to kind of take your time. I think anyways, especially when you're learning. And you're trying to make something better that you're trying to save anyways whatever Jordy so I figure well I gotta go cuz I gotta go do some banking I got well I gotta go do some normal people stuff now these dowels I'm not gonna carve the back of this piece this is gonna be a one-sided piece I don't want to have I'll cut this tail off and shit down there this is a auger bit it's an inch thick so I figured, I figure I will go get some inch dowel and tomorrow I'll do like two at a time. Like I'll start here, I'll do boom, boom, right? So these ones stay in and I'll do them all individually once the glue starts drying. Then I can fill this up and just maybe paint this black back here so I'll film I'll keep this video going because I don't think this video is that long I don't care if it's an hour long so that's gonna be it for me today
tomorrow we'll carve the wings and we'll start putting the aug the thing things in the friggin dowels in all right carry on we'll see you in the same video back tomorrow hopefully early so it is now officially the next day it's like uh lunch time i kind of slept in a bit so i didn't end up going to the store f getting dowels after uh i left here yesterday i found some at home so these aren't an inch like the one that i have but you know here's an old closet clothes hanger where my thumb is and then here's another dowel i bought a while back so i think the first thing i gotta do well i don't know what the first thing that i gotta do is <laughs> maybe do the dowels i don't know another thing i was thinking too is well i don't need to take out all of these why would i have to take out all these they all don't stick through the front here so it's best to leave what i can in there what i can leave in there does that make sense so I still got to do the textures, but I'll leave these backed off. But I know I do need to do these two top ones. So I'm going to find the proper bit and put the dowels in the top here. Let's see, maybe that thicker one can plug these bigger holes right up. Let's see here. I know you get bad lighting with this door open. And I'm kind of going crazy here. Jordy does freaking out. Blah, blah, blah. But let's see here. So perfect. See, so I can... Put those dowels in there then put this one in there to plug the holes <laughs> yes okay so all I can really see is two holes the top holes so I got two dowels um, I use a spade bit to make these holes in there a little bit thinner so these dowels will just go in there like that um, I can cut this off later. I'm going to use the same CA glue that I used. I'm just, it's upside down right now to make the, whatever. Um, I'll put the CA glue on the dowel, super thick. Actually, maybe I'll try and pour some. Now let's put the CA glue on the dowel, super, I know they're a little bit loose. But the, that CA glue expands and I think it should be good. Then when these are drawing, uh, drawing I can keep the CA, the, not to see the super gorilla glue I get they're gonna want to push out I can keep coming back and pushing them back in okay so I tilted the eagle over or the seagull or whatever you want it to be over and ran some glue down the hole and I got this full of it and I broke my rule I got this glue all over my hand so I'm gonna get some gas and uh, or something and wash it off but that's it there now they're both in now I can just start carving the feathers. Once I get this bullshit off, ah, start carving the wings in. Yeah. You know, one good thing to ask yourself is how much time, don't worry about these holes, I'll plug these up later. How much time do you want to put into your... That is a loud plane. Yep. Sorry, what I was trying to say is how much time do you want to put into one piece? So you can see I kind of did my own wing patterns on these wings. I could have slowed down. I could have looked at the... Sorry about the beginning of this video when I was showing pictures. They didn't really come out too clear of this book. But, you know, I could have done patterns just like this. But I do see this pattern here. I see this pattern here kind of coming like that. So, do I want to round these off more? I think it's okay. I'm just going to do my own thing and kind of just do the standard, a standard wing pattern. Um, and then we'll get the big tips out of the feathers out here. But I don't think I'm going to separate them like this shows here because then it gets, I got some cracks here. And I don't want it to break off, but who knows? I'll, I'll figure it out when I get there. But what I'm going to use here is, this is for the very beginning chainsaw carvers, is the brand new still MSA 170 subscriber bought me. Thank you very much. Now this has, 
a cannon bar on here, all right? It's quarter pitch. It's the thicker chain. This chain's actually not very good. It's an off-brand chain, but um, this tip of this bar is a dime tip. It's small. I usually don't run dime tip bars on my gas saws because, see how thinner it is? Because I, I don't know why I would love to use it on my 2511, my little echo here, my gas saw, but I melt them and I fry them because I can't get the oil to uh, go through there very good. So this tip, this bar needs to be cleaned up right there. See that little burr? You need to file that off. But you can see, I want to show you the size. This is a, the, this bar right here is a Forrester 8 inch bar. It's a quarter tip. See how much bigger it is than the dime tip? See that? But I enjoy running this uh, the quarter tip because I don't melt them. I melt these. I can use this quarter tip or dime tip on this battery saw because it doesn't run as fast as the gas saw. All right. So, and this saw has speed control. This new MSA 170, I have a video on it. So why I'm gonna, I'm gonna start off with this, because with the dime tip, you can get under here better, in there better to bring out your little feather things, right? Quarter tip, you have a harder time, but if it's running, if it's going too slow and not working for me, I will go over to the quarter tip. So does that make sense? I'm using the battery saw with the dime tip because it's got the smaller tip bar. So I can get under there easier and turn them out. For this, I'm just going to do these kind of cross cuts. I'm not, man, I've spent enough time on this. But anyways, don't rush, Jordy. First of all, so this doesn't look like a seagull. I'm going to cut the top of this head off. And then we're going to change this face. I'm going to cut the top of the head off first. Right here. And then when I'm carving the feathers, I can take breaks and I can look at this and figure out how I can make this look like an eagle. It kind of can look like an eagle now, but if you don't try new things, you're never going to get better. much happier with that anyways let's get to the uh, this chains on the saw is a piece of shit I might ha might have to use my gas saw let's try a couple um, what swing should I start on and another thing too is another real big thing is I should have started uh, you know I didn't know back then when I first started this four or five years ago I should have carved the wings when they were off the Eagle I could take them off, carve them, put them back on, but I don't want to deal with that crap. But like I said earlier in the video, once I take these wings off, I don't think they're going to go back on. So how do I want this? a piece of shit I'm using the gas saw so I got my gas saw all sharpened up with the with the quarter tip it's gonna be harder to get in there but it's okay this these wings this is first growth see I gotta stabilize this thing so it doesn't move around so much but this these wings are also super chippy cedar even though it's first growth I want to take a second talk about oh yeah don't forget to uh, come around back here See, I got these dowels marked with the pen. See the pen mark in there? Don't forget to come back here. Keep pushing them in. Because they're going to want to pop out. But safety. Here's a shout out to my old friend Gordy Burnside. You know. Chainsaw carving is danger, dangerous work. When I'm using my bigger... 
saws, I always tell myself, don't be lazy, Jordy. Put your chops on. I just won't wear gloves because, well, I just like to get a good grip of the chainsaw with the gloves. But put your chops on, Jordy. You know, I used to have chainsaw. I think I still have a pair. I just put my chainsaw pants. They're cut proof. Put those pants on in the morning. And then you you got them on all day. So I think I'm going to start wearing those. Because my buddy Gordy Burnside, he does flooring stuff. Flooring stuff and he's been using table saws for, how old's Gordy now? He's probably 51. For at least 35 years. The table saws. The other day I got a call from Gordy. I texted him. I said, what's up? He goes, give me a call. I called him. He cut off all his fingers. This is terrible news, but he cut off all his fingers with his table saw. When he's been using the, ta the table saws for 35 years, it comes, becomes, becomes a second, a second, well, it becomes a habit to use the saw. Like a, you can do it blindfolded, but sometimes your mind wanders and goes somewhere else and you're not paying attention. And that's the time that this chain or a table saw or a bandsaw is going to cut your friggin' thing thing. So I'm sorry about the terrible news, Gordy. Speedy recovery. I'm putting my chops on right now. Even though this is a little tiny saw, I'm putting my chops on. And I wear glasses. For all you that don't wear glasses, I suggest getting some safety glasses and um, earplugs. I got these new uh, wireless headphones for cheap off Amazon. I'm gonna put these on and there's their uh, what they call noise reduction so they dampen the noise of the chainsaw and I can listen to music and start carving the wings I could show that picture of Gordy's fingers cut off he took a picture when he's in the hospital but um, it's just too gruesome to show on this channel so just be safe everybody that's all I can ask because I don't want anybody to get hurt on uh, on my dime on my clock or whatever watching this video just be safe.
Okay. So they're carving fusion wings. They're carving fusion eagle, eagle wings. Here's a side view for just carve Rob. Oh. When I'm, you know, I want to talk about art for a minute and wood carvings. I'll say, and I say it in lots of my videos, I'm not born a naturally gifted um, artist. And I started late in my life after I had my injury. Like, I don't know when I started, probably like painting and stuff. And nine years ago, my dad liked to paint. My mom liked to paint. But I was never a naturally born artist. So my point is, when I go on Facebook or on the internet and I... Um, say Google search or Facebook search eagle carving wingspan, wingspan and I look at some of the other carvers and I'm like holy shit these guys this looks like a real freaking eagle um, hi Steve Kanzora does awesome eagles um, his best friend uh, well his friend his buddy the carver Le Levi does awesome eagles there's just so many good carvers of eagles so I can't I can't really Look at their pictures when I'm doing the carving, something like this, because I look at it. Well, no, I don't look because I think I suck. So if that can help any of you, don't look at other people's car. If you want ideas, look through, but don't base your carving on their style because you're just going to think you suck. If that's just speaking for myself. So... I'm I'm a lot happier with the way this is coming coming along now. Just like this car Robin, I was talking to him the other day. He said, You can do it. You can do it, buddy. I know you can. So you know, you got if you got friends like that, reach out to them too. Because they'll give you some confidence. <sighs> he said I did the texture hairs on the thing, chest. What I'm gonna do now is um try and shape this uh, head better. With the die grinder, so I just I just want to motivate anybody or help them if they're a beginning artist. Don't base your art on other people's artwork, and don't be intimidated. These two holes here, I'll make some. I see how that foam came right out that hole, but um, I'll make some wood plugs and I'll just plug them in there later. There's the textures I did there, and nothing's perfect. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to burn this whole piece. I haven't come that far yet of what I'm going to do. It's kind of like phoenix wings, if you ask me. This wing, it's like down here, that curve there, has more movement than this wing. Who cares? Whatever. Well, not who cares, but um, what were they going to say? Oh, yeah. So I got these eyes drawn on here. Lower. So I'm going to, you know, if this head doesn't turn out, I can cut it off and put another one on. I'm going to carve these eyes in deeper, and uh, we'll end the video out there. I'm going to not do too much more on this. I want to decide how I want to finish it. If I want to burn it, paint paint all this black, and then just have the head and the tones, the wood color, or make it all like the skull down there. Because I just burnt that and uh, hit it with the uh, scotch brake. Anyways, I'll get this head kind of done. So that's going to be it for me today, everybody. I still got to finish shaping the beak. I don't want to. I'm going to save the beak till the very end. Because this is what will break off first. You can see the grain goes this way. So I did... All this texturing here, just quickly. I could have done it better, yeah, yeah. With this cheap Chinese cutter. You get these on Amazon. So I did all this. I it, I could I did what I could do. That's the bottom line. Looks like a griffin head, kinda. That's okay. Um, I got these pieces of wood hammered in there. I just used five minute epoxy.
It's better than what it was. Like, anything that comes out okay out of this, I'll be happy because, well, you guys saw the way it was before. So these, back here, I gotta go get some more Gorilla Glue. These holes back here, I'll cut these off. I'll put sawdust Gorilla Glue in here. Um, these, I just cut those, the freaking closet pole up. I'll scuff these up a bit and uh, Gorilla Glue them in. There's one in here already. Tomorrow, when I come back, down here. So that's it. There's the second video of Save the Eagle. That eye's not the best, but you know what? Whatever. I'm, I can I can always carve this this raid out and put uh, a pock. Uh, what's that stuff? Uh, that shell. Oh man, I can't even think of it. What the friggin' that shell stuff that I use. Anyways, that's it for this one. See you on the next one. Be well. Abalone shell, that's it. Oh, another thing too. I got to burn this, sand it. Then I got to, because I don't want to sand every single one of these. See how this wood's chippy there? I don't want to sand this. I'm going to burn it. I'm going to sand it. I'm going to paint it. I'm going to paint this. And I'm going to paint the body. Then this can stay this color. And those talons, when I carve them in, probably tomorrow, they can stay the wood color too. It's not perfect, but it looks like a goose.